What's up everyone? Today we're gonna go over Leak Code 983 Minimum Cost Ticket. First, we're gonna look at the input and output, then we'll look at the approach and the DAG, and finally, we'll look at the code and the complexities. So, the input is going to be two integer arrays, and the output is going to be one integer. The days array represents all the days that we want to travel in, say, a given year. We're going on a vacation, so we want to travel and we want to make sure that we can travel in the lowest and cheapest way we possibly can. We travel using passes and there's three kinds of passes. There's a one day pass, a seven day pass and a 30 day pass, each with their own cost. So the blue represents the type of pass and the red represents the cost of that specific pass. So let's say these are the specific days we want to travel. I've written it out and I put a green check mark on the days that we do want to travel. So 1, 4, 6, 7, 8, and 20. So we can travel using any combination of the passes, but we want to minimize the cost. Let's look at a couple possible ways. So what we can first do is see what if a 30 day pass, how much does a 30 day pass cost? It costs $15. Okay, let's try a seven day pass for the first seven days and then another seven day pass and then a one day pass. This approach is going to cost us $16. So there's various different approaches, but one of the minimal ways that we can travel is this. First, we buy a one day pass, which is costing $2. Then we buy a seven day pass, which costs $7. And then we buy a one day pass, which costs $2. So our job is to figure out what's the minimum amount that we can spend so that we can travel on all of these days. So I just mentioned that I want to minimize our cost. Oftentimes when we go for minimizing or maximizing or counting the number of ways, we go for dynamic programming. First, let's write an expression. This represents the minimum cost using dynamic programming to cover the range of days between 1 and 20. Of course, we're not traveling every one of those days, but we're going to use it to create our subproblems. First, we have to trust that I can solve this, I can find the minimum cost using smaller versions of the same problem. So then we have to figure out how can we make this smaller in a way that makes sense and that we are allowed to do so. Well, what if we try making the range a little bit smaller? Are we allowed to make this 1 to 19? Well, okay, I can do that because I have a one day pass. So that means that I'm gonna travel whatever days I wanna travel up until the range of 1 to 19. And then to cover the 20th day, I am going to buy a one day pass. So the one day pass allows this to happen. That makes sense. Now you might say, okay, how are we gonna calculate this one? Let's look at 19. 19 is actually empty, so we don't have to travel on day 19. The DP, the minimum cost of traveling of the days ranges from 1 to 19, is just going to be 1 to 18. We don't have to worry. Okay, so right now I've made the 20 smaller by turning it into 19, and we know we can figure out 19 because it's the same as uh, 1 to 18. How else can I make 1 to 20 smaller? Well, I have a couple more passes because I just used the one day pass. What if I covered day 20 using a seven day pass? I think I can do that. If I can get the minimum cost of one to 13, then I know that buying a seven day pass, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, will take care of that last range up till 20. Okay, I used my two passes. Uh, my third pass, the 30 day pass. Can I cover the range of one to 20 using a 30 day pass? Yes. So that's a little edge case. Basically what happens is I take a one to, it goes to negative 10 because if you take 20 minus 30, it goes to negative 10. But the cost of traveling on the negative days is zero because we don't have to travel. So simply this is gonna be zero plus the cost that a 30 day pass is gonna be. And these are gonna be the important sub problems we use. The one day pass, seven day pass, and the 30 day pass. 
the empty case, which we just noticed between 1 and 19 and 1 and 18, is going to be useful for the days that don't have a check mark. Now let's look at the actual DAG. If this is an array representing all the days that we have to travel, then DP of D represents the minimum cost it takes to travel between the beginning to that range D inclusive. So if D does not belong to this array, what we're going to do is DP minus one plus zero because we don't have to travel that day and we can reuse the minimum cost from the previous day. Otherwise, if D is in the array, there's three different ways we can cover D. Either we're covering D using a one day pass, a seven day pass, or a 30 day pass. So if we're going with a one day pass, it's going to be DP of D minus one, otherwise DP of D minus seven, or DP of D minus 30. The minimum of any of these is going to be our DP of D. Now let's look at the code. I've written a few global variables. First, a set of integers to keep track of the actual days that we want to travel. We'll use this when we use our DP function and query to see is this specific day a day that we need to travel or not. I've also created an integer array called memo, which is going to cache our recursive function results. The length of that array is going to be equal to the last day that we need to travel. So if the last day we need to travel is 20, the length of that array is going to be 20. So what we want is DP of 20, right? So that's the one that we get from the edge. And then we pass that in as an index I. If that I, let's say it's DP of 20, DP of 19, DP of negative 10. If that I is ever less than zero, we automatically return zero. Or if it's equal to zero, we return zero as well. Otherwise, we're going to check our cache. If the result of that cache exists, then we return it. Otherwise, we're going to initialize a result integer. Next, we check to see if i exists in the set we want. And if it doesn't, we simply call dp of i minus one. Otherwise, we check our three possibilities. The, um, this is a one day, seven day, and 30 day pass. Based on the type of pass we're using, we're going to get a result. And we want the minimum out of those three. Ultimately, we store it in our cache and we return. Now let's look at the complexities. The time complexity is gonna be O of d where D is the last day of travel. The space complexity is going to be O of D because that's the size of the array. So that's how you solve code 983. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe.